Hi, so as you know, we're waiting for stuff to arrive so we can start our supercapacitor production. And we've still got a couple of weeks to go until it actually gets here, unfortunately. But in the meantime, while we're waiting for that to happen and before we can get on with that, of course, I look at lots of other things. And there's one particular thing that I've been fascinated for by, for a while, really, and that's um, plant-based batteries. Now, there's a lot of um, research on this. So if you go to uh, Google Scholar and put in plant microbial fuel cell, you'll find a huge amount of information on it. And it really is quite fascinating. Because although they're described as plant batteries, actually they are in fact fuel cells. So what happens is that the, um, the plant obviously photosynthesizes and it produces an awful lot of organic waste material that it exudes through the roots. And this is a normal process. So in the um, root and soil roots are an awful lot of bacteria that effectively eat this waste material from the plant. That is, they oxidize it. Now obviously we've got a uh, redox reaction going on because the Bacteria oxidize it, but the atmosphere reduces it. So there's a, a reduction oxidation reaction. And if you can capture that reduction oxidation reaction, you can use the product of photosyn photosynthesis along with these bacteria in plant roots to create an energy source. And this theory, this idea has in fact been explored. There's one really good company, I think, called Plant E, that's P-L-A-N-T hyphen E. And there are, as far as I remember, a Dutch company who are actually beginning to commercialise this. So they're doing square metre trays of this on roof gardens to produce enough energy uh, to charge your phone. I think it's two square metres or something they need. So the power that's actually delivered is not very much. But then, of course, you don't need anything to create this power. You just let the plants grow and, and they do it. So if you're talking about acres or hectares of this stuff, then the power generated is considerable. So it struck me as a really interesting idea about energy harvesting and energy collection from the environment. And so I was reading around on this, and as I said, go to Google Scholar, you'll find a lot of information on it. And I came across um, three guys, actually, uh, and it was started by Fabian, uh, Fabian Felder. He created something he's calling Moss FM. So he created these um, 10 containers that he put moss in and then this structure that he put in and he was able to run an FM radio for I think it was about a minute and a half something like that but he was actually able to run displays and radios from the moss battery and he was joined uh, by a couple of guys out of Cambridge and I think they're uh, Ross Dennis and Paolo Bombelli uh, and they helped develop moss FM and, and that's a really another fascinating thing to look at and I decided to have a go at that in this small hiatus just to create my own version of this device, which I did, and it's here. Now, it gives out microwatts, because it's just this petri dish, got a bit of moss, and I went out to the street, actually, and scraped this moss up, put it in the structure, slapped the moss on, and then slapped a bit of water in there. And to be honest, it gave power, but a really small amount of power. And I was thinking, well, that's not very good. So how are we going to improve that? Well, obviously, if the conductivity of the water is higher, if we can give it some kind of ion exchange or redox exchange mediator, we get a better result from that. And that's exactly what I did. So I took some um, baby bio, actually, uh, and added a salt to it and poured that on. And the salt is an additional fertilizer. And this thing now actually is at 3.09 volts and it has real power. That's the thing. I'm going to demonstrate that to you. I've got it hooked up to a um, voltmeter so I can read those voltmeters. But basically it comes out of one side, the anode, and it comes out of the cathode side. It's connected to the voltmeter. I've connected one side of this to the motor and I've left the other one dangling. So all I'm going to do is connect um, to the voltmeter. The voltmeter obviously is um, in parallel. So it doesn't actually affect it and it will run this little motor not for a very long time okay so you're kind of going to need to watch hopefully be able to see that propeller spin and the demonstration here is that we can run an induction motor for a few seconds on the low power of this MOS battery let's give that a go and there you go <laughs> so we got a couple of seconds of that motor running now that motor takes about uh, 14 or 15 milliamps at our point 0.3 of a volt. So we're still in micro uh, and milliwatts, rather. We're still in the milliwatt range, but we're not in the microwatt range, which is really exciting when you think about it, because the salt that we've added there, the fertilizer that we've added there, 
has uh, improved this basic device, really, uh, and that's kind of very exciting and very cool. So what I did then was do exactly the same thing and um, built this or, or planted this. And <laughs> I got some chives from the local supermarket. And I did that this morning. So I'm going to wait for those chives to grow and see if we can make a chive battery. Because the idea here is you could have a, a pot of herbs that you can um, grow and crop and grow and crop and yet they will still produce energy. Now, I'm not going to go into the construction details of this right now because we're actually going to do uh, an energy harvesting workshop. So we'll be doing lots of live events. Actually, we've done two live events. So we were thinking, what would the third live event be and what would be interesting? So we've come up with this idea of doing an energy harvesting live event. And making this from the scratch is going to be in that live event. So um, I'm going to do a live event on exactly how to build this. So ground up, get the bits, put it all together. Here's what you do. The um, fertilizer salt that I mentioned, I'll tell you exactly what that is in the live event. So you'll be able to build this device, which uh, I think is actually an improvement on, on the MOS battery and what other plant microbial fuel cells are. I think it's an improvement on it. Uh, but we can go through that and, like I say, during the workshop, then we'll obviously um, create this. Now, well, we are going to create a kit from it so that you can have all the bits in front of you uh, so you can just build a, a back plant battery or actually strictly a plant microbial fuel cell but a plant battery. Uh, and we're going to go through that in the live event, prepare the kit, give you all the instructions, all the information and tell you what that um, fertilizer salt is that had such a dramatic event, uh, effect on it because it's taken it from microwatts to milliwatts. And as I say, it's not a massive amount in these terms, because we're talking about little petri dishes, but if we get a lot of this, then we suddenly have actually a way to harvest electricity from the growth of plants where we don't damage the plant. And I thought that was absolutely fascinating, so I thought I would share it with you and share our plans with you about what we're going to do with the live event and on making a plant battery. So I hope that was of interest to you, and um, thank you very much for watching.